Good morning, it's Dr. Alan Yim. Take a listen to this opening of the Mozart K333 piano sonata. It modulates from major to the dominant key. So it begins in B flat and it's going to modulate to F. See if you can see or find or hear where the point of modulation is. If you're listening closely, you might recognize that we end on a 5 chord there. And if you sing the note that you think is Do, so we end it here, you might recognize that Do is... But where we started was here. So, so Do starts in B flat, and we end up with Do on F. The whole objective of this type of modulation, common chord modulation, is to make it as smooth as possible and to kind of cover it up. And that's one of the reasons maybe why we only go from one key to the relative, which is no key change, or to the dominant um, or subdominant, which is just one accidental. So we go to a closely related key or its relative. Now. Here is how you can analyze this and find out where that point of modulation is. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to label the starting key. And of course, you know it's in B flat. You could tell the starting key by the key signature and just by the sound, or you could obviously notice that it begins in one. And when you're writing or analyzing, uh, you're always going to look for the one, the five, seven, and the one. Okay, so here is where the main tonicization is in the beginning. And then as you go through, you can kind of scan and look for places where there are accidentals because we know we're going to go to the dominant here. And we can look for the E natural. So maybe you, you can say, well, there's an E natural there, there's an E natural here. So we can start with the first couple of accidentals here in the scale here. Well, you know, there's an E flat immediately after. This just looks like... So these little um, half steps here, they look like non-chord tones because there's E flats immediately after. I'm going to eliminate these first two as possibilities for key change. And we're gonna look for the last time we see B flat for sure. Okay, well, if we look in the third system here, we see B flat very clearly here at in this measure. Okay, and um, we also listen for these phrases where at that end confirming that we're in B flat. So in the opening, one, two, five, seven. downbeat of the second measure, that's a 1-6, and in this measure before, okay, that's basically a 5-1-5-1, five, um, five, one, five, one, but it's inverted. And then 1-6, right, back to 1-6, so it's alternating. Same thing here again. another confirmation of the chord, of the key, I'm sorry. Here we go, five. All right, so that's the outline of that. Now we go on. Just like
like the beginning. Except down a couple octaves, or down an octave. Now here there's a change. So it looks like all of a sudden we have C7 here. And then it goes on. So this looks like a 5 1 in the dominant, right? C7, 5 7, 1. Now, could we, could we put this in B flat and call it 5 of 5 to 5? Well, yes, we could. But it would seem awfully strange to have a, a secondary dominant for two measures. And then to go on with this thing here, basically, again, this inverted thing confirming that we are in F, because this is all, let me get this out of the way here, this looks now like 1, 6, 1, 6, and this looks like 5, 4, 3, right? 5, 4, 2, excuse me. But all of this in the key of F. Okay, so you notice I, I'm already thinking here in F. So somewhere bef between the B-flat chord and the 5 in the third measure, something happened here. So let's look at the third system from the beginning. Okay, so the, that's the first place we have a non-diatonic chord. It's actually a secondary chord, and sometimes you could treat this as the pivot chord. In the key of B flat, this looks like a G minor chord, right? So it looks like six in the key of B flat. In the key of F, this would be two. And here we go. So now I'm going to put this line here. This is the line if you, that marks where the common chord is. So down below, I'm going to write the new key, which is the key of F, and up above, okay, normally this, is, this would all go down below in the space, but there's not enough space, so that 6 would go up above. So, um, I probably, this needs to be inverted, okay, because this is G minor over B flat, okay. I don't even like that chord so much because it's six first inversion. But I'm going to just leave it like that um, because it's the next chord that's really non-diatonic to the first one. Really, it's the E natural that all these E naturals that follow, that signal we're in a new key. Okay, so that's the analysis of it. The common chord, I'm going to say for the purposes of this, is the six uh, first inversion or the two six in the new key. And that smooths over the transition into this dom the secondary chord, this dominant chord. Um, we could just think of it as a dominant chord in F, not a secondary chord. Okay, and that's it. So this is very, very typical modulation in the classical period, and actually in most pieces that are labeled sonata, um, even symphonies, any ones that have this sonata form in the opening where it modulates from the tonic to the dominant key, they oftentimes follow this common chord modulation, and it happens during the transition from the first theme to the second theme. Thanks for listening.